Hey, that was immediate, dude. Hey, dude. <laughs> it works. Heck yeah. We cloned Zoom in Rust. We built the entire stack in Rust. The code is open source and MIT licensed. Feel free to fork it and give it a star if it helps you. We are going to walk through the most interesting nuggets so that it is easier for you to use it. The project was created with our UActix template, which we created in a previous video. Check it out. For messaging, we use Google Protobuf. Google Protobuf is a binary serialization and deserialization protocol that allows backwards compatibility of types and generates payloads orders of magnitude smaller than JSON. The Protobuf folder contains all the messages. We use the media packet message to send all the audio and video amongst the peers. To simplify generating Rust code, we created a dockerized Protobuf generator that creates Rust files with the host user's permissions. To run the generator, just go to the protobuf folder and run make build. The generated code will then be written to the types crate. Types crate is used to communicate the front end and the back end, so it is defined as a cargo dependency on both projects. For the first pass, we use web sockets to communicate peers. When you start the web app, it connects to the Actix web server using this handler. It spins up a chat session actor which registers itself into the room that you specify in the URL. Once a WebSocket chat session is established, the video can be sent to all the attendees. The front end of the application is built with U, which has a similar syntax to React and allows you to write front end web applications in Rust. If you would like to know more about how to get started with U, check out this video that we previously made. The URL that you go to contains the email and meeting ID. The U router is responsible for receiving those parameters and passing them down to the attendance component. These parameters are used to connect to the correct meeting. When you press the connect button, it initiates the connection. For video encoding, we use the web codex library via the WebSys crate. This library provides bindings for the Chrome JavaScript libraries. Configuring video encoding is not that straightforward, just a one line command thing. First, you need to define the callback to stream the encoded data chunks to. Then you need to specify the code that you want to use, something like VP8 or VP9, along with the resolution. We decided to use VP9 codec for encoding and decoding video. The application does work with AV1, which is a newer codec, but the video does not look as smooth as it does with VP9. After that, you can specify the bitrate and encoding mode. We recommend real-time for teleconferencing applications. When a new frame is encoded, it is put into a protobuf media packet message and sent over to the server, which is responsible for distributing it to all the other members of the conference. 